welcome back to the Squadcast. Um, I almost missed <laughs> coming back because I was grabbing my water, but I hope all of you at home are properly hydrated right now as we jump into our next conversation, which is about Xbox Gold pricing friction and Game Pass perks. Steve? Yeah, uh, this one is a bit of a, a doozy, to say the least. Um, when, when I pitched this earlier last week, I, I thought I was only going to be, well, talking about half of this as it evolved, you know, it evolved so quickly. So it's, it's going to be, stick with me for a bit. There's a, there's a lot to go over, but uh, yeah, this past Friday, Microsoft uh, found themselves a bit of a whirlwind that when they announced that they were going to increase the total monthly total of Xbox Live Gold subscriptions. As you can imagine, community backlash quickly followed, which ultimately gave way to Microsoft rescinding their decision and rolling everything back. Yeah. This all occurred over like 15 hours. So I'll, I'll quickly go over the, the timeline of events and then we can kind of go over it all and discuss it. But Friday morning, there was an unexpected Xbox Wire article that went live informing current subscribers and potential players that may sign up for the service later that the monthly total would be increasing. Uh, as stated, Microsoft's intended increase was as followed. I'll kind of go over it in in Canadian dollars anyway. So for a one month subscription, it would go to $12.99, which would be up $1. Three months would be $34.99, which would be up $5. And then six months would be $69.99, which would then be up $25. Uh, mm -hmm. It's worth noting that Microsoft discontinued the 12 month subscription of Xbox Live Gold uh, last July. So that's no longer an option. Uh, if you could kind of glance over the the number for like six months, that used to be the total for a full year. So they were essentially doubling mm -hmm. the subscription for Xbox Live Gold, which yep. in case you don't know, like that's what um, online play, party chat, and even the ability to play free to play games was behind. Uh, which going uh, off of that, uh, following the announcement, like the community began obviously voicing their disapproval. It ignited this whole conversation that PC play players really have the best value when it comes to online services because online play isn't paywalled, right? Uh, PlayStation kind of falls on that side as well with a long Xbox, but the frustration really stems from Microsoft's decision to gatekeep free-to-play games behind Xbox Live Gold, something that yeah. PlayStation does. Obviously, PC doesn't do that either. Um, yeah. Kind of, for example, like Fortnite, one of the biggest free-to-play games out there, isn't really free when you have to pay $140 a year to play with your friends. Yeah. Same with Halo Infinite, a game that 343 is touting as a free-to-play. They they have like their multiplayer as free-to-play isn't free either. Uh, so a lot of people oh, were that, upset. That wasn't that wasn't going to be fully free outside of Xbox Live. Well, no, you could assume no. I mean, oh, none of the other because, games were. I, yeah. thought, I thought I'd heard that that's what they were doing. Well, all they that, said was that it's free to play. Okay. But so is okay. Fortnite. So is Warframe. Yeah. Okay. Which, is, which is crazy when you think about it, because even like PlayStation yeah. has like when it's a free to play game, it is free, free to, to play. play. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's what you would think because the publisher or the developer um, behind it, that's how they intend their game to be used. So I don't even know how the discussions go with, say, Epic and Xbox, like in terms of having that game available on an Xbox that's supposed to be free to play, but then not like the, it's a loophole pretty much. Mm. I feel that yeah. Microsoft has been using. Right. When Netflix, you needed to have Xbox Live in order oh to use Netflix. God, yeah. Ridiculous, like, yeah. What? <laughs> I remember yeah. that, and I didn't even realize one day until, like, I think my thing had run out and I had changed my credit card, so, like, it didn't auto-renew, and I was like, what? why is this not working all of a sudden? Like, <laughs> my Netflix, I was watching it on my phone a few minutes ago. Right. But, it should be working. Yeah, so yeah. weird. Yeah, uh, so, so weird yeah, person. following, like, an afternoon and evening of, of discourse, late at night, Aaron Greenberg tweeted out an update to the original Xbox Wire post at 9 p.m. PT. Uh, the... Uh, Xbox Wire post now said this. I'm going to read out the full quote just so we have a full mm. context mm. Of, of what's going on. So, quote, we messed up today. We were right to let, and you were right to let us know. Connecting players with friends is a vital part of gaming, and we failed to meet that expectation of players who count on it every day. As a result, we have decided not to change the Xbox Live Gold pricing. We're turning this moment into an opportunity to bring Xbox Live more in line with how we see the player at the center of their experience. For free-to-play games, you will no longer need an Xbox Live Gold membership to play those games on Xbox. We are working hard to deliver this change as soon as possible in the coming months. 
If you're an Xbox Live Gold member already, you stay at your current price for renewal. New and existing players can continue to enjoy Xbox Live Gold for the prices they pay today. And then they go over the price price model in the U.S. dollars. Um, so it, it, in my eyes, like this, this whole ordeal kind of highlights Microsoft's long-term goals for its ecosystem. Uh, the way I read it was that, you know, they were doing this in a bid to kind of incentivize players to then convert over to Xbox or Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, which while more a little more expensive, does have a lot more value to a player outside of just online play. Yep. Uh, I, I do but encourage... Do you- but sorry, do you really I, think, yeah, continue, sorry, continue. I, I was just going to end with a, one quick note. I do encourage all of our audience to go online on Twitter and look up Daniel Lamad's Twitter account. He has like a huge breakdown of like how he reads it and goes into like the back end stuff of how conversations specifically around like the, the free to play model was, has been in talks for quite a while and really just goes over how this reads off as like Microsoft having a really tough time scaling Xbox Game Pass. And this is part of their plan, which now because they rolled it back, they're going to have to look at other ways to scale up Game Pass in the future because this is their their model for their ecosystem. It's just to incentivize people to sign up for that subscription and stay there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's 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 what I was going to say, right? Like, is that actually the smart way to do that? Because then you get all this negative press from mm-hmm. people being like, what the heck? Uh, why are they going to up the price on the service when they're supposed to be that place for budget gaming? You know, the best deal in gaming yeah. is supposed to be Xbox, right? Um, and that's how they've been selling the Game Pass. I think this just goes to what we've talked about when, um, you know, PlayStation had their showcase and they talked about the PS collection and we were talking about the different bundles and right. how both consoles seem to separate their access to online. Mm -hmm. They then have, you know, a game pass or, you know, the PlayStation um, now. now. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, why wouldn't you just bundle the two? And I feel like the, although it wouldn't have really been a news story, I think the more logical thing for Xbox would have been to say, we are getting rid of Xbox live and live service is going to be bundled in with, uh, a game pass, either the base or ultimate. Yeah. Right. And that's how you get your users to go. Yeah. No, I definitely agree. To me, like this kind of shows that th- the quickness of how, how fast they, they rolled this back and all that kind of shows that the decision to increase the price of Xbox Live Gold wasn't really made by the core Xbox team. It kind mm-hmm. of reads more like there were executives up there that were like, well, we can double dip. We've got two sources of revenue here. We've got Xbox Live Gold. We've got Game Pass. Why not just get the most money we can? And, you know, here we see, like, they were so quick to to react to this, to react to the negative press that people weren't behind it. They had stuff going. They I was going like, to say, I think that's what the, the, the big story here is that it's similar fashion to what we may have seen previously with something like Star Wars Battlefront 2 or even right. like Fallout 76, where consumers were just like, no (laughs) like they were like uh we do not accept and Mm -hmm. it came to the point where like yeah xbox had to be like okay all right we'll uh we'll roll back on this um but i was gonna say you know similar to what camille was saying that you know like it it sounds like it wasn't all all this really was was to try and help out game pass because it's probably becoming an expensive Mm -hmm. thing for microsoft and they need to sustain it and they want it to continue to be that greatest deal in gaming um but obviously this wasn't the way to go about it they got a lot of backlash for it i'm not entirely sure what plan b is if there ever was one for microsoft but they're certainly going to have to do some thinking because this worries me this makes me think that like game pass while they love it and they want it to be their business model it's not bringing in the kind of returns that they were maybe hoping for to stay afloat hmm I'd be very, very curious to be a fly on the wall of oh, yeah. some of these business decision meetings. I mean, it's it's tough to say, but it does it does breed of other teams coming in who don't necessarily understand the 
ecosystem that is games and kind of what they've gone through Mm -hmm. the past few years especially when it comes to you know this whole concept as games as service is fairly new it kind of only really perked up in the forefront mostly the past generation and i think we're only just starting to figure out what is a game at ser- as services? How do we kind of manage that as a business entity to keep it fresh and keep people hooked? I would I would put money in the fact that they're going to decommission Xbox Live Gold at some point because yeah. that's an old way of doing things. They haven't hiked the prices in eons, like maybe mm-hmm. since even existence. And <laughs> we're not we're not playing games exactly the same way anymore. You know, the free to play model model didn't exist then. So I can understand why they want to do it. I feel like if I was a betting woman, I feel like they had this response in the can because they knew this was coming. Yes, But Corp was like, no, 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 no. We're going to try it our way first. And the Xbox folks were like, okay. And then when this, they opened the floodgates, you know, the team at Xbox was like, see, we told you so. Yeah. Let us go and retract this now because you're yeah. burning our bridges. Yeah. yeah. So and, and you're right. Yeah. It's an older way of doing things. We've talked about it on the Squadcast before where having access to just online play is so prehistoric. Like it's just now everybody, a lot of people who game have access to the internet. Um, yeah. They have access of playing games for free on the internet. It's just really weird that consoles would hold themselves back from making relationships with publishers, like ex- yep. having more exclusive deals if you have like, um, you know, players having access to that game. So they can make exclusive deals with those publishers to have, you know, like Halo and, and Fortnite. More of those things happening if Fortnite now knows, Epic now knows that, hey, yeah, players on Xbox will have access whether or not they have uh, gold. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's unfortunate, though, because I think what people don't realize, too, is that internet and bandwidth usage when it comes to being a service provider like that is expensive. And that means the more people that are on the service and using the service, the service, sorry, the more uh, cost they incur. So obviously, when they priced out Xbox uh, Live Gold back in the day, they probably had a certain rate, right? Mm -hmm. And now as, you know, bandwidth caps get bigger, games get bigger, online packages that need to go back and forth between the data centers and your console is bigger and has to be faster. You know, those things cost money. Even though you don't see it, it does cost money for a company to to operate, which, you know, they're obviously seeing this considering now they've got game pass. They've got all these people constantly downloading and using these, these platforms for them. They need some kind of way to guarantee at least a bottom level amount of cash so that they can pay back, you know, their service providers and, and keep those data centers running. Cause one of those goes down or the first people let them know that, you know, stuff's not working right. Yeah. Yeah. And it's interesting. I mean, game pass has been, available what two years this will be its third year i think think. it's third year yeah Yeah. and we still don't really have an inkling of how this is profitable for microsoft like it's this weird nebulous thing where they keep adding more value and more value like the uh, ea play content they're they're bringing in bethesda stuff now Mm and so at what point do they one really increase the price of this or two like I kind of see a future where they kind of roll out tiers for Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, and yeah. they're like, "Here we're getting rid of Xbox Live Gold, but this is the base of Game Pass." Let's say so for I don't know sixty dollars because uh, they seem pretty comfortable with sixty dollars. Here's sixty dollars for a subscription, and you get online play and access to Microsoft ex- exclusives or something like mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. And then you get like a more substantial tier where it's like, okay, now you get you know, our third party partnerships. And then for uh, another tier, you pay even more, but then you get EA Play, some, something like that. Like there, have- there has to be some sort of scalability here. It just can't keep going on the way it is, right? Yeah. Well, Unless I'm missing something. They, they, kind of, they kind of do have that with Ultimate, right? In the regular That's true. Game Pass, right? Which yeah. to me, I feel like Game Pass should just be Ultimate. Um, yeah. right. Because if you have a player on an Xbox, um, and they have a PC, they're probably going to be playing on both. So you would probably want those users when they're playing on their PC to be playing on a, you know, a Xbox sort of application, right? right. Um, so for me, I feel like 
the base game pass should just be gone and it should just be ultimate. However, you know, for some people who may not be able to afford ultimate um, or it just may not make sense for them if they don't have PC, I understand why the base um, game pass is there. But what you're saying is right. Like, I feel like, do we see a future now where it's just going to be different tiers of these applications while PlayStation kind of figures out what they're doing with PlayStation now? Um, do we see, cause I, I do kind of see Xbox and Microsoft saying, okay, maybe we don't have live anymore. And live is just there. Something that, or, you know, access to the internet is something that everybody just kind of has. Mm-hmm. Do we see PlayStation following suit? Oh yeah. They just they would have to. PlayStation just got to work out his business deals. That's the pro that guaranteed does the thing holding PlayStation yep. back mm-hmm. is the business deals that they've signed and they probably signed them in perpetuity for like. 10 years or something and it kind of put a nail in the coffin for any moves they want to make right now yeah. give them some time because you have to understand too like microsoft microsoft is obviously used to dealing with all these things when it comes to their you know pc business and and uh you know microsoft office and all that kind of stuff playstation yep. and sony on the other hand is is a curator of content just as much because they obviously have the music industry the movie industry, all mm. these kinds of things that are all intertwined um, that, you know, they have all these separate entities. They need to figure out how to get that all to mash and work together so that they can offer up something that's competitive too, and then have a similar ecosystem that kind of works like Xbox um, Game Pass does. But they need to figure out their their legal side first and strike all their deals they need to do first. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I, and, and, I, and I think, Steve, I, I think you're onto something there regarding the tiers um with game pass i can i can actually very much see that becoming a thing because yeah they're gonna have to figure out something to compensate for whatever original they original plan they had with raising the price of uh xbox live um and that could be a viable solution i don't know how many subscribers they might end up losing Mm -hmm. to that tier system but they could also end up gaining quite a bit If if your tier one is like indie games and you know like smaller scale games that could appeal to a lot of people where yeah. it may be it may be cheaper than what Game Pass is right now, but of course you maybe don't get access to some of the AAA titles that you would want. Um, and then you go into the higher tiers where you can play games like what what do they got on there now recently? Um, they, they did they have Jedi Fallen Order on there at one point, or am I thinking incorrectly? Mm-hmm. I think they do now. It's part do of the Pass right now. Yeah, I believe it is. Yeah, right. Yeah. I think so. So, yeah. you know, you go you go into one of the higher tiers where you get AAA games like that, then that yeah. could appeal to someone who maybe wants to jump into a, a third person action adventure for for one month or something like that and then switch over to the next game the next month or something. So I could see that becoming a viable solution. They gotta yeah. fix their naming conventions first, though, and that's another reason why they need to obliterate Xbox Live Gold. <laughs> I know. Uh, yeah. I fudge it up all the time on our podcast, keeping it straight between the one X and the series X and the series S and the gold and the live. And the, we talked about this yeah. too in our podcast and it was just like, keep correcting ourselves to make sure we're talking about the right thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's not easy. And if they want it to be approachable and easy for the non gamer, cause we just spoke about all these new people coming in, they got to fix the naming conventions too and make yeah. it simple. Yeah. Just simplify the whole thing, uh, which includes getting rid of games with gold. Oh my yeah, God. Just crack that, that whole thing. Yeah, uh, I what? Mean, they don't need that anymore. That's exactly. another antiquated. And that's the only way they're going to get rid of that. And that costs them money to do too, yeah. right? Yep. They pay out to the publisher for that each yep. and every month. Mm-hmm. So yeah, they got to figure that one out too. And I think they're going to have to do like a, a cold turkey thing and just like gone. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, I brought it up on, I mean, many shows before him, but like how antiquated and how unneeded games with gold is. And we were, uh, you know, I, I tasked these two with, uh, you know, just just tell me how how do you find your games with gold offerings nowadays? Like I don't know how to find it on my Xbox. No one does. <laughs> Come on. I think we're also in a u- unique position though, Steve, where we often get some of that stuff early, so we wouldn't That's be true. interested in playing those games anyway. But I yeah. do think that you're right. It's not easy to find. No, they you hide know? it, and a lot of the titles are now in Game Pass anyways. I mean, I, I, yeah. I thought it's I thought it was different. really telling. I thought it was really telling that this month when they minutes before they announced their their price increase they yeah. announced one of the best lineups for games with gold i've seen in probably two years yeah. <laughs> and i'm not even being facetious I, I like there was gears 5 there was um indiana jones game there was a lost planet 2 like there were really good games there i was like mm. okay well maybe granted i've played a lot of these games in the past but i think this is the most compelling one i've seen 
in but a long time. But you've played those games before, right? And I, I think that's where Microsoft, as well as, well as Sony, like they kind of need to figure out how they're consolidating all these mm-hmm. different adventures that they went on when we're yeah. trying to figure out online gaming, trying to figure out the exclusivity of some of the games. Now we're seeing even exclusive games released on other consoles or PC a year out. So it's how are they going to consolidate all these services to make it beneficial, yes, for them, as well as for the gamers. Because for myself, who has multiple consoles, who also games on their PC, Mm -hmm. it's like, if I, I'm lucky enough where I don't necessarily have to pay um, for every pass because I do get that through either Xbox or a PlayStation. But if I did, I would probably just invest in one of them to tell yeah. you the honest truth. Okay. Um, so, so I think I think that's what they're figuring out now, and it'll be interesting to see how that moves along in the future. Yeah, mm-hmm. if if they're dead set on keeping games with gold around, I would really love them to see them do something like a similar approach to what PlayStation does with PS Plus and take a really big risk with smaller games like we see with Rocket League and Fall Guys. Like, give us something for free that we know is going to take off, like something brand new that the community can just get behind because that's what mm-hmm. games with gold kind of needs is something mm-hmm. to root for and get behind mm-hmm. and kind of like unite and start playing together. We we don't need gears five at this point. Like people who were going to play gears five have probably played it at this point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly.